Okay. All right, we'd like to call to order the, this uh, meeting of the Board of County Commissioners, and we do have a form tonight. Um, Commissioner Hawkins could not be with us tonight, so uh, we do have a quorum here. And uh, we'd like to start the meeting off with Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation, and with that, I turn it over to Ms. Carrie Bell. Yes, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to arrive, arrive here safely tonight. Thank you for the men and women who protect us from harm's way. Harm's way. Lord, I thank you tonight for allowing us to live in a country where we can choose people to represent us. Please watch over them tonight and help them to make decisions that will be we ask these things in your name. Amen. We'd like to recognize any elected officials that are here. Do elected official out there. If, you, if you're an elected official, would you please stand up and identify yourself? Uh, Richard Hook on the school board. Sure. Appreciate you coming out here tonight. I know you're all later on the agenda. Appreciate you being here. Uh, next, any veterans that are here, can you please stand up so we can recognize you? Any veterans? <laughs> County department heads, if you would stand up and let us know which department you're with. Office of and Human Resources. Chris Green, Tax Administration. Carrie Mountain, Community Services Director. Right, Thank you. Commissioners, first item on the agenda tonight is the motion to adopt the proposed agenda. I would uh, ask that we make a couple of uh, amendments to the agenda. Um, we would like to uh, add the audit contract amendment as number as item I on the consent agenda. Um, and the answer to that would be one for that. Um, and also, uh, we'd like to remove the public hearing from the agenda. Um, that is, uh, we'd like to continue that to the next commissioner's meeting. Um, continue it to the next commissioner's meeting, uh, which is Tuesday, October 21st at 6 p.m. That's for General Statute 153A52. And that's for support clarification on that, on that item there. Anything else, commissioners? Any other? Changes or additions? And a motion? Make a motion to re accept the agenda. I'll second that. motion and second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Citizen recognition for persons wishing to appear before the commission during this portion of the meeting should register their name and the subject they wish to address with the clerk, uh, county clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. Each presentation will be limited to three minutes. The board is interested in hearing, in hearing your concerns, yet speakers should not expect comment, action, or deliberation on subject matter brought up during the public comment segment. Topics requiring further investigation will be referred to the appropriate county agency. Tonight we have three people that have signed up to speak, and um, um, if you please come up and give us your name and your address. And the first one we have is um, Tim Stalker. My name is Tim Stalka. My address is 145 1 Hicks Road, Grover, North Carolina. Cleveland County Commissioners, we do not criticize you personally. Rather, we seek to encourage you to use wisdom. You have uh, you have heard that you have heard it said numerous times uh, from from this podium here that that. There are numerous, numerous of us that support a casino-free community, and and you, you've heard the reasons for that, that, that we support this on economic, moral, and social reasons. But I'm, I'm here tonight just to remind just one, us of one point, and that's that, that uh, there are many people who support a casino-free community that may not be in these halls, and and from my opinion, as well as yours, they should be here if that's how they feel. But 
I just want to remind us that there are only, usually, on any issue, those who speak out against something, either for something, against something, are usually just a small fraction of the actual populace that feels that way. If, if we could say then that there are maybe a, a select number of us that have spoken here, maybe a slightly larger number that have attended but have not spoken, then would we not say that that reflects an even greater number in the community that, that are in favor of a xenofree environment? And then we could also, if we would say, oh, well, maybe it's not a whole lot larger number that really are uh, in favor of a xenofree environment. If that's the case, then maybe also consider how many people have spoken in favor of a casino here. Then I would also say there's not, then in that, with that logic, a whole lot larger group of people that are in favor of a casino, if, if we're going to follow that logic. So I just wanted to just allow us to consider that. I personally uh, do know people that the support of uh, casino-free community that have to work during the evenings and, and cannot be here. I know others that support a casino-free community who have no vehicle, um, some that, that attend over at, at another college that wouldn't come if they could, but don't have a, have a vehicle to the other side of the county. Um, so, so I just want to just bring that to our attention, just something to think about. I thank you very much for all you do for us here. Thank you. Thanks, we have Kristen's talk. I would like to mention that I am another person opposed to the proposed casino in King Compton. My husband and I are expecting our first baby on election day actually, so you all know how soon that's coming up for us. And we do want to raise her in a safe community. However, I would like to thank you tonight for a specific project you all approved. I had the privilege of attending the groundbreaking ceremony for the playground edition for special needs students. I am a special education teacher, and it was a great encouragement to sit in these chambers and hear your discussion and your vote for that edition a couple of weeks ago. The ceremony was a special time, and I greatly appreciated Commissioner Paul's speech. It is a blessing to see a group of community leaders concerned for all people in their community, even those with disabilities. And thank you also for your consideration and attentiveness during this portion of the meetings that encourages us when we get up here and speak. I do appreciate all you do and all you will do for Cleveland County. Thank you. Karen Clark. Get an accurate report. 
at the Sands Casino in Pennsylvania. For 19 hours a day, they offer free liquor. Drunk driving in the city was up nearly 8% since the casino opened in 2009. Consider this scenario. You're driving on 85 at night. Little do you know that a drunk, that a drunk driver full of free alcohol is leaving the casino at the same time. An accident happens and you find yourself in the hospital with multiple injuries. Perhaps you would feel scammed, but then the whole casino industry is based on trickery and deceit. This was not what you had in mind when you signed the letter declaring how you enthusiastically and emphatically expressed your strong support for the citizens of this community in favor of the casino. What seemed like a golden opportunity for jobs was in reality a nightmare. Just because something is promoted for the good of the community does not make it right and doesn't mean that it should be accepted. Imagine all the wrecks that will be on 85, especially if free alcohol is offered 19 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long at the proposed casino. But remember Little Red Riding Hood. What seemed like grandma was in reality a disguised wolf. Just say no to the casino. Commissioner's next item is a consent agenda, and for that I'll turn it over to Kenny Manson. Mr. Chair, thank you so much. Several items for your consideration tonight. I'll start with the minutes. Uh, you have 40 minutes from August 5th and September 16th for your meeting for your review and consideration this evening. I have several budget amendments uh, that I'd like to go over. Uh, all of which are from the health department, and I'll begin with budget amendment number 11. It, this is a budget amendment in the amount of $81,000 for the health department to budget money in the Carolina Access Program uh, for the Chronic Pain Clinical Initiative uh, to carry out a statement of work uh, through the North Carolina Community Care Network. And that is budget amendment number 11. Item C is also a budget amendment from the health department, and that is budget amendment number 12. It is in the amount of $100 from the health department to budget STD prevention funds from the Department of Health and Human Services that will be used to purchase supplies. Our next uh, consent agenda item, item B, is budget amendment number 13. It's in the amount of $222 from the health department Budget Department of Health and Human Services Summer Food Service Program funds for the health department. Our next uh, consent agenda item is item E, and it's budget amendment number 14. It's in the amount of $2,500. It will allow the health department to, to budget Department of Health and Human Services uh, money coming in that would support the overdose prevention task force. Our next uh, consent agenda item is item F. It is budget amendment, budget uh, amendment number 15. It's in the amount of $2,045. Again, from our health department to budget office of rural health medication assistance money that will be used uh, in program for salaries in the health department. Item G is budget amendment number 16. And it is a, a budget amendment in the amount of $667. It will be received from the University of Kentucky, and it will be used to pay for a DVD uh, player combination that will be used in our family planning clinic. And our last budget amendment tonight is uh, also in the health department, will be, and it will be, I'm sorry, it's not a budget amendment, I apologize. This is to ask permission uh, for a write-off of accounts receivable in the health department. And this is for $22,107.01 in private pay fees. And we would like to write those off as uncollectible for services that were rendered throughout uh, budget year uh, ending June 30th, 2011. I have spoken with our finance director. He has reviewed this and he said this is good financial practice to do this. I will note that if any of the inactive patients that are a part of this collection process were to come back for services to the health department, that all of these fees would be reinstated and that would be uh, consistent with county policy. Our final uh, item tonight, Mr. Chair, is uh, the add-on item, and I do apologize for this. This was a last-minute item, and what I see really is the last-minute opportunity. 
Uh, it is item I. It's in our finance department. Our finance director is here this evening, Mr. Eckley, and he, 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 he came to understand late in the auditor's visit that there was an opportunity for uh, the county to enter to amend our contract with our auditor and allow our audit firm to do uh, uh, to prepare the schedule of federal and state awards for this budget year. That's required by law that we do that. The county has an option. We can do that internally ourselves, or we can contract that and have our auditors do it. Our auditors currently, on a regular basis, prepare that report for other counties. They are proficient in doing that, and it is a time cost savings for us to enter into that contract. It's about a $1,500 amendment to our contract, but it's going to save the county significant internal staff resources due to the proficiency of our auditor. The timing of it and having to hurry up and do it tonight, the audit, the audit uh, will be completed by October 21st and then sent to Raleigh by the 26th. And so we needed to go ahead and get that done this evening, and that was the hurry up piece. And I do apologize for putting that on late, but would like your consider consideration of that. And if you need more details, Mr. Evans here to answer any questions that you have. Mr. Chair, that's a lot tonight on the consent agenda. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have here before we have. Commissioner, you heard the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? No discussion. No, we accept it. We have a motion to accept it. Is there a second? We have a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. All right. Under special recognition, um, item number four, uh, Minority Enterprise <coughs> Development Week, we uh, recognize uh, Richard Hooker just a little bit ago. But we, Mr. Hooker, we'd like you to come up. He's with the Cleveland County Business Development Center. And, um, your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and to the other uh, uh, commissioners. Uh, it is that time of the year where not only this community, but communities across the state and across this country are honoring and celebrating the uh, important contributions, significant contributions made by minority businesses uh, uh, that have made an impact and difference in, uh, in this nation and in the state. Uh, as you know, this uh, Celebration was first uh, conceived in 1983, so we're approaching 31 years of uh, observance of this important celebration. Before I introduce uh, the chair of this organization and our vice chair, I wanted just to cite a couple of significant uh, uh, data or statistics that sort of illustrates why we celebrate minority enterprise development, uh, both in this community and across this nation. Uh, from a U.S. standpoint, fact, there are over 5 million minority business enterprises throughout this country. Uh, they contribute $1 trillion in economic impact across the country, and they employ over 6 million uh, workers uh, nationwide. When we look at the state of North Carolina, I wanted to cite a couple of the data uh, that was uh, prepared uh, by the UNC uh, Keenan Flagler School of Business. And they uh, did a study a couple of years ago on the economic impact of the African-American population on the state of North Carolina. And just a quick snapshot, it just further illustrates the importance and the impact of this particular <coughs> community. Uh, the African-American community contributed over $60 million to the state economy. Uh, and this was uh, data that was prepared uh, five years ago, so that has incremented the increase. Uh, they contribute over $5 million in state and local income taxes uh, to our statewide community, and they have created over 85,000 jobs statewide. So that's just a brief illustration of why we observe and honor uh, these important business enterprises and why we celebrate uh, the North Enterprise Development Week in, uh, in Cleveland County. So uh, on behalf of the Cleveland County Business Development Center, uh, we want to again thank uh, the Board of Commissioners for your continued support in observing and recognizing the important contributions of minority businesses in this community. And with that, if I'm in order, I want to uh, recognize the chair of our uh, uh, business uh, development center. Thank goodness it's not uh, basketball season. We may not have it, but we do have, uh, as our chair, 
uh, Mrs. Gabe Bowe, and our Vice Chair, uh, Mr. Rockefeller, if they would come forward. We'd also would like to uh, uh, read off, we've got a proclamation um, that we'd like to present from the county that all commissioners have signed. Whereas Minority Enterprise Development Week is an annual observance that has been proclaimed by every president of the United States since 1983 to highlight the important role and contributions minority business enterprises bring to our local, national, and global economy, and whereas the Cleveland County Business Development Center, in collaboration with Cleveland Community College Small Business Center, Shelby Starr, Cleveland County Schools, and other community partners have teamed up to facilitate greater awareness, civic participation, and access to opportunities and information through business education, networking, and community capacity building, and whereas this year's celebration of Minority Enterprise Development Week also will bring together small business owners, community stakeholders, and emerging leaders to provide a diverse array of learning opportunities, including the Women in Business Series, Youth Forums, and Emerging Leaders Lecture Series, and annual award celebrations to honor local success and improve the overall business climate and spirit of collaboration. And whereas the 19th, 19th Annual Awards Gala represents the highlight of the year's celebration in Cleveland County to recognize and commemorate the accomplishments of small business entrepreneurs, local citizens, and community organizations who give of their time, resources, and humanitarian efforts to make a difference in our community and beyond. Now therefore, the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim October 20th through 25th, 2014 as Minority Enterprise Development Week in recognition of the cooperative efforts of the above sponsoring organizations and individuals to enhance, promote, and support the success of minority-owned businesses and other community partners in Cleveland County adopted this seventh day of October 2014. We'd like to come down and, and uh, maybe take a picture and would you, you like to say anything? Would you like to say anything? I think we should just know. It's the first time. What does that mean, Richard? I don't think I've ever seen what Mr. Miller didn't want to say. I noticed Dave's wearing orange. I'm ready. I'm ready.
you know, and I guess breast cancer is dear to me. Some of you may know, you know, my wife died in 2000 breast cancer after a bout. My daughter's had breast cancer. Thank you, my friend. Her daughter now has got breast cancer. I can look out there and name names of people that we've got working for us that's in the audience tonight that, that had the same problem. So the way that we can fight this thing is all of us get together, we make it aware, do your mammogram, do your follow-up, do your checkup, will be a good thing. And I, I guess that's probably my most daughter Buffy, but you know, Buffy was with the first group that started Relay for Life. And she has participated, or my family has participated in Relay for Life every year since it started in some form of fashion, either with a team or sponsoring a team. And we enjoy it. It's something that we look forward to every year. So we do have a proclamation and we can read it. Whereas last year, more than 230,000 women and 2,000 men were diagnosed with breast cancer in America, as well as 102 cases in Cleveland County. And whereas the heartache and the pain of this disease has already touched too many of our mothers, fathers, daughters, sisters, and other family members. And whereas when breast cancer is caught early, treatments work best and survival rates increase. And whereas all women and men should be familiar with risk factors and symptoms of this disease and should take every effort to be screened annually. And whereas the station has invested billions of dollars in critical research to better understand the causes of breast cancer, develop treatments, and create better diagnostic tools. And whereas those that have been lost to this disease, as well as those who have survived, all deserve our remembrance and honor. Now, therefore, the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaim October 2014 as Cleveland County Breast Cancer Awareness Month and encourages all citizens to join them in recognizing the impact that breast cancer has on the citizens of Cleveland County how we can all move forward to combat this disease together without this the seventh day of October 2. I think you've invited some guests to receive the proclamation. We yeah. have we have uh, um, Rita Wortman. She's a clinical education specialist at Cleveland Regional. Rita, would you like to come forward? And also Julie Pearson, she's a special relay for life. If you would come forward as well. And we also have Marie Jackson yeah. from Marie. Marie, would you come up to Marie has the one up in King's Mountain, I know, and uh, it'd be good to have her there too. So Brian, I'd like Brian to come up here too. Okay. Brian, Jeff, or Jeff, Jeff. I'm sorry, Jeff. I'll see you back there, Jeff. I'm a 10-year uh, breast cancer survivor. I'm very thankful and blessed to be here today. Um, I've been heavily involved with Relay for Life as well, and I'm just thrilled to see my counterparts up here. Thank you guys for everything you do. These folks put a lot of effort year-round into Relay for Life to, to raise money for cancer research. And that's why it helps us all be here today. Do we have any employees in the audience that would want to come up? Do we have anyone else in the audience that has breast cancer? Just out of curiosity, how many out there in family has been touched by breast cancer? Can we ask for everybody that's had a family member or a friend? Sure. That they would please stand up? Yeah, please stand up. Okay. You want to go down and make the presentation too? And I, I think uh, uh, Rita was going to speak for a minute too, and, okay. and Julie as well. Do you want to do that first or after? That's not bad. Be fine. Okay. Any, of them, any of them wants to speak? Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I am Rita Workman. I'm the breast health nurse at Cleveland Regional. And I've been in chemo for a long time and I have treated some of your family members. Um, well, in hospitals now, there's a new trend to have nurse navigators. So that's what I do now. And so I call our breast patients from uh, the time of diagnosis to the continuum of care. But what I'm here tonight to speak about is. Um, so not to take away from really like life because I work hand in hand with Julie, but do y'all know about our Because We Care Fund that's at our hospital, the Regional Medical Center? Soon to become Carolina's Medical Center, uh, link, I mean, link. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you about is um, we do not get funds like from the Susan G. Coleman that goes to the larger cities. 
We know Molly Grantham. She's been at our hospital. I'm in touch with D'Angelo. If y'all don't know him, you should know D'Angelo. He has his pink locks now for that he's sporting for the Panthers. But still, they get that funding from the Susan G. Cohen. Well, um, also now, there's a new side effect that doctors are talking about, and it's the financial toxicity with our patients. And it's high in Cleveland County. Well, my co-worker back there was Ronnie Hopper. And this came out of her vision that somehow we had to help our patients in Cleveland County in our hospital. So she came up with the idea we would have our own walk for COVID. And uh, since its inception, we have raised since 2008 over $300,000 in our company. Um, all of our funds stay here in Cleveland County, and it's used for all of our patients, not just our breast patients. It is managed by our Cleveland Healthcare Foundation, and um, we are the only disabled hospital in North Carolina to have such a fund. And we can do sometimes what no other fund can do. And I'll tell you a few things that has happened with it. Um, we uh, have bought mattresses for some of our patients yes. didn't even have to be. All of us are going back home to and get in our fancy beds. Well, that's how what's happened with some of our patients. Um, well, Tanya took a homeless man and his family um, to a hotel just a few weeks ago. And uh, the man just kind of rubbed that bed. He just couldn't believe it into the refrigerator, they couldn't believe that they have food in the refrigerator. Um, some of our uh, head and neck patients have to have their teeth, teeth extracted. Um, sometimes we have a cap on our fund, but sometimes we have to exceed it because those patients have to have their teeth extracted and able to, you know, to uh, give them the treatments. Um, and then, just for our breast cancer patients, all of our patients that leave the hospital need to wear what's called a soft tee. It's just a, um, um, a garment that they wear post-op, and so this one does provide that for our patients that cannot, you know, afford it. Um, and then, um, we have two major fundraisers a year. We have our Walk for Hope that we had in September, and then we'll be having our mask break. So I want you to make y'all aware of this, <coughs> and we hope that y'all would invite you to the panel party. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you guys for allowing us to be here. Uh, Rita can talk all night on the Because We're Here Fund, and if you're not familiar with it, check it out. It's, it's pretty awesome. It, all the money stays here in Cleveland County, and a lot of folks do not know about it. Uh, what I'm standing for tonight is Relay for Life. What I'm doing is raising funds for research. So we do not have to, to deal with cancer at all. I do not want my child to ever go through what I went through watching my mother with breast cancer. So I have just a few little facts about um, that the more funds that we raise um, can fund more research. Um, we need to address obesity and inactivity if we know that that's an increased risk for breast cancer. Um, if we can get everybody screened, only 67% of ladies are screened now. We want that to be 100%. Um, and we need to stop the spread of breast cancer. Uh, everybody has a perfect opportunity this month, and I challenge everybody here. Uh, we wear our pink ribbons to remind those family and friends that are eligible for mammograms to have those mammograms done because mammograms do save lives. So I want to introduce my partners in crime. Marie Jackson is helping with the Kings Mountain Relay for Life. We do not have an immediate date for it just yet. We're working on the end of April, but we're looking at a lot of new and exciting things for Kings Mountain. Brian Court and Jeff Melton are chairing up the Shelby event, which will be at the Cleveland County Fairground on May 15th. Mm -hmm. So these are my folks that I appreciate and they work so hard. <laughs>
I got in there and just we just worked it through and had a wonderful experience and then the next year and I haven't been quite as involved since my husband passed but that means a lot to me just that walk for hope committee and what you do for I actually know a recipient that did receive something because of those funds and I thank you for that I'm a nine-year survivor Carrie and I have something in common she walked in and and, uh, and I was <laughs> she, took, she took my job <laughs> and um, we love each other for that and uh, we uh, that's how we relate to each other and blessed that they still call me to come back sometime in Philly and Thank you. Uh, Rita was my nurse navigator just last year, and I got to say, my little arm pillows and my soft tea um, meant the absolute world to me. Yeah, you guys got anything? I appreciate so much what you do for the community. Uh, we are in the process now of qualifying 
EPC, engineering, procurement, construction contractor, the heat contractor that will do the final engineering, procure all the equipment, and do the construction of the project. And we're going to file this, uh, that EPC contract will be selected here probably the first of next year. We are soliciting local companies for, you know, that want to participate in the construction of the subcontractors or his trades and companies that have local and regional uh, capabilities. Our website is on this fact sheet here. There's a they click on there, they can register their company, what their capabilities are. We're turning all that over to the EPC contract once that's, uh, once he's, he, they are selected for this time. So they, um, we secured uh, 290 acres of property, about half of them 290 acres right now. We're going to utilize about 20 acres of it for the power project, a lot of buffer around here. But we're also thinking long term, there could be some public private uh, partnership capabilities in the remaining acreage. Yeah, what that is yet to be determined as we go forward. But, uh, NTE Energy is a long term, they want, they're, they're going to be a long term community corporate citizen in Cleveland County. We are there, we're, we're not building the plant itself, we're going to operate this thing for four years. We're going to be here, out of here. <laughs> some people, some people but uh, um, the, uh, the, the the corporate citizenship, if you will, is a, uh, an important element of our projects. We've got one project being developed in Texas, one in Ohio, but the one here in North Carolina is actually the, the cream of the crop. What we currently have in our because I'm good. No. <laughs> um, we had a public hearing. Uh, September 23rd, uh, for the North Carolina Utilities Commission public staff came down to hear comments on the uh, project. There were no uh, opposition voice at the public hearing. No file, no, no opposition was filed against the project with the solicitation of uh, uh, written files. We expect to get our certificate of public convenience and need from the commission here in the next month or so. Um, we're finalizing, we actually finalized the natural gas procurement off the Transco pipeline. The property I got, ever since why did I pick Cleveland County, this site, well, there's a the interstate natural gas pipeline running through the property of Optum. There's all the gas from Mobile, Alabama, all the refineries that run up to Boston, everything else runs up that pipeline. And right now, gas is actually back feed on it because it's a feed from mm -hmm. Pennsylvania and West Virginia. And on the other side of where I'm putting the power plant is the energy's 230 kV electrical transmission grid. So it's between the fuel and where I'm going to put the power on the grid. Uh, it's not rocket science. Uh, Ed Tucker, our senior developer, uh, he said, why don't you put it here? I said, that's a good idea. So we did. And, uh, um, air permitting is under, underway now. We submitted all the air permits. We expect to get that here. Final notification from Dina in just a few months. Ago. The uh, file of Duke Energy for the interconnection, they're, 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 they're in the final efforts of finalizing what it's going to cost us for upgrades for us to put 475 megawatts onto the wires. Uh, the upgrade in the double switch yards north and south from our side, probably, put the breakers in. Uh, we obviously will be paying for all that. Uh, it improves the reliability of the grid because the breakers are better, the more power is on the grid, and the ability to distribute the power is better. Um, I, I talked about the equity financing. We got that complete. The debt financing, we, this last week, we started going up to New York talking to the banks. We will get the, the, the bank loans for the debt piece and the financing. Again, it's a very popular property. It uh, uh, seems to be an awful lot of money out there. Very good interest makes the property even more popular. Um, all this leading to, a, again, a uh, start of construction, first, second quarter of next year, commercial operation, first quarter of 2018. Sounds like a long way off, but there's an awful lot of steps to get up to where we start construction. Um, I have a couple here, but I think, uh, again, I want to Kind of stress the long term corporate citizenship. That's what we're going for. Just to give you an idea, everybody asks, what does NTE stand for? 
give you the idea of the type of company. So the ancestral is the present. Um, Eric says, well, it's nighttime energy dealer. And what did they say? It's actually the initials of his three children, Noah, Tom, and Nelson. And so it's, a, it's really a family company that has tremendous financial support now with the capital and equity uh, folks that are on board with us. Brief update, but let me just got a lot of questions. Do you have any questions? Mike, um, thank you very much for what you just the update that you gave us on MPA. And we know that you had choices to where you could be when you were looking for locations for these. Could you elaborate a little bit on why you chose Clinton County? We're, we're very happy you're here. Yeah, um, I guess it's, we, we narrowed it down to probably four or five locations which had the gas, the, the ability to get gas nearby. High voltage transmission line nearby. Why do we pick Cleveland County? I guess, uh, you know, I've been doing, I've been working with the county and the city of Kings Mountain folks and some of the other folks in the region here for about a year and a half, two years probably. Uh, yeah, I've met Jason, met several of you know, over that time, met some of the folks in the city, and, and it really felt like a, a good partnership. Uh, that it, it was, uh, the support seemed to be there. The, community, the size of the community is what I like. I mean, I, I like the, the, the mid-sized communities, and uh, we, we really, I really think we can bring a lot of good to this community, as well as y'all bring a lot of good to us. And so it was partially the physical requirements of the plant gas and transmission, but probably equally important just the, you know, <clears throat> I guess, the relationship that I can sense between the county and the city and us. Thank you. Glad to hear that. Also, I guess I'm next. I just want to tell you just while you were talking, and we appreciate you being here. Your plan will be a natural gas. What what would be like compared to Southern Power or something similar? Because the processor, you have a new process different than what they're using. It, um, I wouldn't say it's my process, but it, what Southern Southern has is what's called the simple cycle. It's combustion turbine. It's used for peaking. It's when we go hot day, go cold day, it's still fire up. <coughs> yeah, now I know they do the peak, but of course they generate the power. It's, generate it's, it's a combustion turbine that generates power and exhaust the heat. What we're doing is taking that step further, what we call the combined side. Okay. That exhaust heat that they're exhausting, we're going to run through a boiler, generate steam, and run up to a second turbine, the steam turbine, rather than the combustion turbine. So you got two turbines generated for the same model. Okay. That's the question I guess. You have to get on the boiler line, and that's, I guess, the transmission power. Is it like the highway you pay so much to use their, their grids or lines? Say, for example, if, if the city of Kings might chose to buy power from you directly, could you run them direct power, or would they still have to come across as a transmission line? They'll, be, they'll still be served by two, by two transmission systems. They would buy the generation that they chose to buy, they said buy from us. <coughs> they still get generation transmission, I'm sorry, transmission customer too. Yeah. And they still be a, uh, they still get about the same fee as the transmission that's coming in the now. It's still the same power the same location. Yeah. I think Jerry did that foot now, but I got one more question. <laughs> that's the inside joke. Okay, uh, you know, we, we brought ourselves on partnership here in the county and looking at you coming here to look at what do you see? in your long-term vision as part of our county, being part of our county? Well, I don't know, there's a, I saw from one, one gentleman, you know, about, uh, I, I can see an energy center, an educational complex, perhaps, at the, at the center, to, to talk about energy, not just natural gas, but just energy and how's it work, how does you know, it get on the grid, how do you take it off from the grid, I can see. Uh, visitor summit being created where you have school kids coming in to learn about energy or natural gas or hey we put a solar panel or two up somewhere to see how that works and uh, have some testing for the students. I can see training from your community colleges and some of that for some of our employees um, long going. I mean just just some ideas I have. I mean, but, yeah I think again it's we need to have a lot of conversations to see what works for both. Thank you for choosing to yeah. Thank you very much, Mike. I is a mention of jobs and all the communities concerned and interested in jobs. 
and uh, pertaining to the community college, the 25 or 30 full-time jobs that you will be uh, utilizing and employing is uh, you see the community college being a training center to help you train people for those jobs, or what type of jobs do you look at those 25 or 30 people? Yeah, you know, I, NTE will probably have one or two or three people, like the station manager or something like that. Some of that's going to be an NTE employee. You know, but I, I can see the other 22 to 27 employees coming out of the, the local community, whether it's, you know, we want to hire some folks that are either trainable or already trained for the various things for operations, for maintenance, for uh, outage management, for scheduling, for uh, and, and the craft labor for Whenever we have an outage every 18 months, it's not just 25 or 30 people. We'll probably be 50 or 60 to, to do a, an overall maintenance of it. And uh, the training for all these people, whether it's scheduling, project management, uh, outage management, operations, maintenance of the machinery, the turbines, and bus work, and things like that. I, I can see a lot of training for the local people to help get the, the young people ready for the jobs. Because again, Four years life of this thing. The, the kids today are going to be people operating the plant ten years ago. Well, thank you so much for choosing Cleveland County, and I think this is a further testament to the partnerships that exist within the county and corporate citizens are coming into the county. And uh, we we appreciate you a ton. And what it says for the county as far as becoming an energy center, a data center, as well as the you know automotive and, and automated uh, high manufacturing centers and you just have another strong component. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We appreciate your support too, sir. Hey. Mike, I'd like to say I really appreciate you coming out here tonight and going over the project with us to give us an update. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why it hasn't been, we haven't had your report because you didn't come ask us. Right. <laughs> we appreciate it, so, uh, but we, well, we do appreciate you coming um, uh, come here and, and you know one thing that you've hit on so many times and I've seen because um, we've, we've talked several times and I've, I've met with you and been in meetings with you is this does seem like a relationship type project. I mean, um, the, especially the city of Kings Mountain is very familiar with you and you with them and with our county and, and uh, that's something that's happened. Um, so we appreciate the attitude and the, the, the um, appreciate your trust in our community uh, as well. And and to take that one step forward, uh, I appreciate a comment you made a while ago um, that you were reaching out to local contractors and to local people to um, to fill those needs that you're going to have down the road. And, and that means a lot to our community. So we really appreciate that. Yeah, I believe we've got something like 85 contractors signed up for I can't say well that everyone would get hired, but I mean the capability to offer services and bid on various pieces of construction and uh product is out there. That's great. We would like to uh Commissioner, do you mind if we, we just we haven't had Mike here before? Can we get that picture with him? Sure. We've had pictures of everybody and
Thank you. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. some of the other 
before we buy the things that's not so our people are about nothing that's just need to get involved and really work on this. We've got a meeting Thursday to talk to the planner to get them suggested, but uh, like I say, we need to thank Kelly and Tim and these guys. Especially Kelly, but Kelly's been doing the leg work, you know, Tim and pretty much tied up to, to, to find us to let us know where we stand. Thank you for all the time. I know you a long time. A lot of time and effort in this. You've been keeping us up to date too long. Even so, I appreciate it. Appreciate all your time. Yeah, I'd just like to say thank you to uh, Commissioner Hutchins for keeping us abreast and you can uh, follow some of those uh, write ups. You will notice it from time to time in Charlotte Observer and local media also. <clears throat> but it is extremely important because uh, the weather score, they can certainly pull money and funding away from the finishing of I pass around the shop, so it's very important to the local community to stay involved. Like our your your representation and and our local representatives. Well, it's well, planning great. Got a lot to do with it too. You got, you got to start there. It's been a extremely busy past couple of weeks, and Commissioner uh, Oldbrook and I shut the fair down. So we we were there all the time. Extremely uh, uh, well, good fair this year. Um, I think there was a lot of I heard a lot of good comments about it. Um, I don't think they reached their goals, but they they set some pretty good goals. But uh, uh, a lot of people attended, so it was uh, very popular. If there's nothing else, any questions?